Hi, my name is Wyatt Stoof. Uh, this is my industrial tragedy project. We're going to be going over and discussing the uh, cause and effects of the Bhopal gas leak. So, background uh, when did this occur? December 2nd, 1984. Uh, this actually lasted from December 2nd through the 3rd, as well as the 4th. Um, the leak persisted throughout those, those few couple days, and the leak, um, the effects lingered uh, for a couple days and, and well after, as we'll get into. Where? Uh, Bhopal, India. And then what? There was a gas leak at the Union Carbide pesticide plant. Um, Union Carbide is the name for the American-owned Kempel Corporation, so at the time they had a few, um, well, they had more than a few plants uh, throughout the world, this one being in India. Um, and they actually owned one in West Virginia. So what happened? Uh, approximately 30 tons of the highly toxic gas, methyl isocyanate, as well as many other poisonous gases were released due to a leak in the plant. <clears throat> this was caused by a leakage of water into the uh, methyl isocyanate tank. It caused a chemical reaction resulting in the buildup of carbon dioxide, as well as other harmful gases that kind of mix together. Uh, and then caused this, this leak. Uh, this ended up causing the tank temperature to rise um, and then bursting the tank. This leak turned the city of Bhopal into a little gas chamber which affected hundreds of thousands of people. Uh, the effects, so like I mentioned, hundreds of thousands of people were affected, approximately 600,000 people in the city, as well as surrounding areas were exposed. Um, that slow leak just kind of leaked out got into the sea, um, causing people's eyes and throats to burn, causing nausea and death and more serious underlying um, health conditions that were that affected people um, years down the road. As I mentioned, death, the death toll varies from around 3,000 uh, of initial people that were, that were killed from it. Um, what's estimated now to be about 16,000 over the years. Um, due to underlying complications from the disaster. And that's something you'll see, uh, for example, like Chernobyl, the nuclear power plant disaster. Um, it killed thousands of people initially, and then um, down the road, years after, months, years after, um, people are still dying from cancer, radiation poisoning, all that kind of stuff. Um, so not only were people affected, but it killed animals and livestock as well. Um, also affected families, many of exposed people, women had given birth to physically and mentally disabled children. And to this day, it's said that thousands, tons of hazardous waste still remain buried underground at plant site. Uh, so like I mentioned, I mean, this took a huge toll on people's livelihoods and the rest of their lives, affecting the way that they live. Um, I mean, with like killing animals and livestock as people's livelihoods, way of life, um, jobs, food sources, all stuff like that. Um, conclusions. So this disaster resulted from operating errors, design flaws, maintenance failures, training deficiencies, and economy measures that endanger safety. Uh, thus, according to present and former employees, company technical documents, and the Indian government's chief scientist, evidence was produced uh, that this plant had at least 10 outstanding safety violations, and that to me is crazy and just kind of shows why this happened. Um, yeah, I'm, an, yeah, I'm an EHS engineer at a manufacturing plant, and I can't imagine being in a situation where we would lack 10 outstanding safety violations. It just screams non-compliant, not having the proper systems in place, um, just pretty much the whole spectrum there. Um, in this specific situation, uh, it was said employees did not react in time and didn't think that it was that serious at first, being the leak. Um, and again, this just shows lack of preparation, lack of awareness, lack of training, all that stuff that, that led to this. Um, one employee stated that leaks were common and they were never investigated. So, as I said, um, they had thought that it was just something that was going to pass, something that wasn't super important, something that couldn't lead to, to a disaster like this. Uh, overall, I mean, this plant, it was clear this plant lacked leadership and proper oversight uh, and had no knowledge or proper training in order to deal with something like this. Uh, and it's very clear that safety was not a priority here. Um, 
they ignored those priorities, didn't think about future consequences that could lead to a disaster of, of this degree. Um, the safety systems in place that they did have were incapable of coping with the existing conditions the night of the disaster. Um, one of the systems was even inoperable. Multiple accounts stated that practices and safety precautions had not been followed for quite some time. Like I mentioned before, safety clearly not a priority. Um, and the technology that they did have at the plant, um, it was either outdated, non-existent, or unreliable. And like I mentioned above, one of the systems was inoperable and they had done nothing about it. Um, and on top of all that, the plant was understaffed as well as undereducated and lacked the proper training. Um, safety systems that they had in place were ineffective, as I mentioned, inoperable. They didn't keep up on their day-to-day -day tasks, audits, inspections, stuff like that, that led to these issues, and they didn't have the proper systems in place to catch hazards, clearly. At a plant this size, lacking staff is one thing, um, but training is something that kind of needs to be done um, on a regular basis that helps in preparation um, and provides awareness and knowledge to, to help deal with these dire situations. So, aftermath. Um, the Bobo disaster could have changed the nature of the chemical industry and caused a re-examination of the necessity to produce such potentially harmful pro uh, products in the first place. Um, but that's not really the case. Um, lessons of acute and chronic effects of exposure to pesticides and their precursors in Bobo, uh, unfortunately to this day, has not changed agricultural practice patterns, meaning um, to this day, like I said, there's still um, following these, these same um, rules, guidelines, still not um, fully aware of, of uh, what the negative effects could be. Um, and supporting that, it's estimated that 3 billion people per year suffer the, con the consequences of pesticide poisoning with most exposure occurring in the agricultural developing world. Um, and it's reported uh, to be the cause of at least 22,000 deaths in India each year. And India's got a huge population, probably one of the biggest in the world. And I, just in my opinion, I feel like they do things way different over there. Um, they're not as, as diligent as, as we may be in here. They probably don't have the um, same level of regulatory agencies such as OSHA, all that stuff that come in and kind of um, keep them in check and make sure that they're following all the rules so they kind of do things their own, their own way. Um, and this slide kind of says that it says it all. They didn't really learn from their mistakes. Um, they're in the same boat as they were when this occurred, and they're just waiting and asking for something else like this to happen. So summary, uh, this disaster had a large impact on the safety movement. <coughs> Shed light on things like following standard procedures, um, being in full compliance, having up-to-date systems and technology, and properly training employees, and it's pretty clear that they didn't have standard procedures that they followed um, or kept up with. They weren't in full compliance or even half compliance. Um, like we talked about before, their safety systems and technology were inoperable, non-existent, uh, or even up-to-date. And then just the fact of them being understaffed and lacking training employees. Um, so all of those points lead to the conclusion that this disaster could have easily been avoided uh, if all minor major checks and balances were maintained and monitored. Um, it provided urgency and the opportunity, the clear opportunity for other, other industries and businesses, corporations to learn from this um, and possibly revisit their safety measures and perhaps improve on things that they lacked. Uh, those are my references, and that's it. Thank you.